lovely friends, welcome back to my channel, or if this is your first time here, my name is Melissa or Missa, welcome. Today, I thought I would start a new series on my channel, the Get to Know Me series. So rather than me sitting doing like a Q&A, I would just go through my life with you because I did a recent video which was like a get ready with me and I spoke quite a lot about personal issues and it was just very liberating to be honest and a lot of you shared your stories with me and I shared my story with you and it was just nice so I thought maybe if you want to get to know me a bit better I'll do this kind of series and every time I'll do like a different makeup look and then maybe at the end if you've got any questions you can let me know you know what I mean so We'll see how it goes, I don't know if this is gonna work. It's kind of like the draw my life challenge, but instead of drawing it, I'm just gonna talk about it and do my makeup at the same time. And I thought today I would just do a really simple look but using my new P. Louise Worldy palette. I do plan on doing like a full proper in-depth review tutorial swatches, but today is just not that day. I don't really feel like doing anything crazy. I just kind of thought I'd do maybe like a dark blue smoky eye, something like that just lovely skin get rid of that spot if we can I shouldn't have picked it so yeah anyway I think we'll just dive in and we'll we'll start and I'll just go through my first first few years in life and let you know how how old Melissa here came to be I don't know maybe this is a really stupid idea you're watching this on a Friday night and if you're watching this on a Friday night then you're not out having fun so I am, first of all, I'm not really going to talk about the makeup, but I will tell you what I'm using. I'm using my Revolution Ultimate Eye Base. This is the lightest one. I was born on the 19th of February, 1991. Uh, that means that I'm 30 next year. <laughs> Terrifying! I was born, I'll try and like put pictures and stuff up on screen as I go through like what pictures I have. I was born in a very small, horrible little place called Leipster, which is in the far, 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 far north of Scotland. I am very much a Highlander at heart, and I'm very proud of being from the Highlands. I don't know, I think there's something about being Scottish. You can tell me if you feel the same, like, from where you're from. I feel like Scottish people have a very, very, very strong sense of pride about being from Scotland, and I definitely have that. And I was born in two, probably some of the worst circumstances that you could imagine, to be honest, for anyone, for children. Um, my biological parents were very bad people very just the worst kind of people the people that should not be allowed to have children but let's be honest what can you do about that I did have a mum and a dad and I don't actually know an awful lot about them although I do have my social work notes but I've only ever looked at them once and that was years ago and um, I'm first of all going to start off with the shade San Francisco if you're going to San Francisco I love that song. I'm terrible singer. So I had two at the time. It's changed since. I had a biological brother and sister. Both um, my sister one year older than me and my brother one year older than her. So he's two years older than me. Um, and we were there and eventually we were rescued by social services. Um, took them long enough, let me tell you that, and we were very, very, well, to be honest, I have read my notes, so there's some kind of fostering in between, um, and I was actually returned to my biological parents on my own, without my two siblings, for a very brief time. Um, I, I hope I'm remembering this correctly. Obviously I don't remember very much and in fact my parents didn't really know a whole lot until I got my social work notes. Um, I remember I requested them in like maybe 2015, 2016 and I was at work at the time when they arrived and they finally arrived and I thought it was just going to be like a little envelope and it was like this huge, like big massive shipping envelope and it was full to the brim of papers and I was like wow, that's quite a lot. Eventually. Um, when I was two, 
my parents, my parents' parents, not the biological back, but my actual parents, if you're adopted you know, um, they took us all, all three siblings, which was just amazing of them, but they just love children, let me tell you that. Um, they took all three of us and um, best thing that could have ever happened to me. I mean, literally, I don't know how much to say because I don't want to upset anyone that's watching, um, but to be honest, the, if we hadn't been taken away, it would have, you know, very possibly ended up in death or severe, severe, severe ongoing issues. Um, my parents were definitely alcoholics, I think potentially drug addicts as well. Um, so yeah, anyway, I feel like this primer settles in my creases really bad and gives me um, creasing and like not greatness. Maybe I'll just need to keep it as a like cup crease kind of thing. But we'll give it a shot, I'm just going to use that same shade but on a like bigger brush. So from Leibster, so from the age of two from Leibster, I was with my parents and we were then in a lovely little small town called Tain. At the time I probably didn't think it was very lovely but looking back I'm just, you know, has good memories there for me. Um, it was a very, very small town and we weren't used to city life at all. Moving to Edinburgh was very distressing for all of us little country bumpkins. Um, so yeah, we grew up in a little town called Tain and we had this lovely house. My dad is a minister and a minister of religion, not like of politics. So as is very common with churches, you get like the minister gets a house with his parish. So we had this lovely house and this amazing huge garden. They were supposed to build another house on the same plot of land and they never ended up doing it. And so we had this massive garden for me and my five siblings, well four siblings. I'm gonna use Sky High, this one right beside that deep blue. And it was just the best garden. We had swings, we had bushes you could hide in and make potions. Don't tell me some of you didn't make potions, I bet you did. So I ended up um, when we'd been adopted, well, we were actually fostered until I was six or seven years old before they could get the adoption to go through. So when, but when we went there, my parents had already adopted my oldest sister, who is, I won't mention any names, just like for privacy and stuff, but my oldest sister, who is exactly like 10 years older than me, not quite exactly, but she's 10 years older than me, and my older brother, who is about seven years older than me. And they were very, very good to us. When we arrived, they were delighted to have three new siblings. I'm sure that wore off quite quickly because my phrase as a kid was famous for being me too, me too. Whenever they were doing something fun, like with their pals, I was like, me too, me too. <laughs> Didn't want to be left out. I'm going to use Europe. It's a very fun colour for Europe. Well, I guess there's like nice blue seas in Europe. Just not around here. So far, very impressed by the shadows. Way more impressed by this than I am with the blooming Nikki tutorials mats, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that for free. So yeah, I was then the youngest of five, which oh, I dipped in the wrong shade, which was amazing because when you're the baby, you get off with everything. Like it's always everyone else's fault. Um, Mum tended to be Bit more gentle with me I feel I don't know she always used to let me like stay off school when I was sick even though I wasn't sick but I said I was sick because I wanted to stay at home and she would always let me it's uh, probably quite bad but uh, she was she was great I was a real real mummy's girl growing up probably still am to be honest um let's put a metallic on the lid make this a wee bit more interesting shade J'adore Paris. This metallic blue here. There's only three shimmers in the palette, but whatever. So I actually ended up, this is stunning. <laughs> I ended up starting school a year earlier than most people. 
Um, so I was always, and until I left school and even when I started uni, I was always the very, very youngest out of everybody because I was desperate to go to school you don't even understand because all of my siblings went to school like my um first like brother and sister they were in primary school and then my older brother and sister they were in high school and every day I saw them get their wee pack lunches and get sent off to school and I was so jealous that I couldn't go to school so I ended up going a year early because my mum was just eventually gave in to me and was like fine we'll put her to school um and i loved primary school like how stunning is that blue ah yeah i had a really great time in primary school we had like i said it was a really really small town so there wasn't very many people there i went to craig hill primary school which was lovely had absolutely wonderful teachers i mean i only have good memories of primary school. I had heaps and heaps and heaps of friends. This will change when we get to high school. I had heaps of friends. I was, I wouldn't say there was like a popular group because as the school was so small, but like never had any issues at all. Yeah, school was just absolutely wonderful. Highly recommend being a primary school kid. You really don't realize how lucky you are. I'm gonna then use Worldy, which is this lighter one. I'm just wanting to see if I can make this shape look a bit better. Imagine all our, our juicy stories will come when we hit my teenage years, right? So one thing that our family always did growing up, we weren't in any way well off. Like we really didn't have money. Ministers aren't paid particularly well. My mum was a nurse, um, but she had to stop that quite early because she's got really, really bad health. So like we never really went abroad very much. We did do this really big holiday once with, I think it was the caravan, like caravan holidays. I mean, they're the best thing ever when you're a kid. I would never do it now. But as a kid, I mean, it was the most exciting thing ever. All seven of us packed into this caravan. We went to France, Italy and Switzerland. I was very, very, very young. Like I remember barely anything about it. But one, like our biggest treat ever and like the most exciting thing was our parents took us to Disneyland Paris. And I still remember my parents bought me a Minnie Mouse balloon and it was my pride and joy. And I'm not even like a big Disney fan now at all. Sorry, Jenny. Sorry, everyone. That Minnie Mouse balloon, oh my goodness, it came back. Came back to Scotland with me. I don't know when my parents managed to put it in the bin after I deflated. Um, I need more dark blue in this crease, don't I? So that, that holiday was epic from what I'm told because I don't really remember, but I do remember at Disneyland Paris, we waited in the queue for hours and I mean hours for these rides because that's just what happens when you go to these, what, adventure parks, whatever you call them. And we waited in this massive queue, huge queue, for a very, very long time. And when I got to the front, I chickened out and started crying and wanted to leave. So my poor mum, who'd been standing with me for hours and hours and hours and probably wanted to go on the ride too, had to walk, walk, walk away from it, poor thing. And then we stood in the queue for the runaway train. And this is a memory I will never, ever forget because it was the most awful thing that ever happened in the world but it's not but you know what I mean we waited in the queue for the runaway train and we finally got to the front and then I started freaking out I was like no I'm not going in it and my mum's like you are going on this ride you made me wait here for hours we're going on it poor mum she just wanted to have fun at the park as well um and she made me get on get on the train the runaway train with her and I cried the entire way round and had my head in my mum's lap just face down the entire way around crying poor thing I wonder if there's any photos that remain of that. You know, like when you go through it and they take a photo and try and sell it to you for like 40 quid. It would just be the back of my head on my mum's knee probably while she laughed at me. Yeah, I'm not very brave when it comes to like roller coasters and stuff. Anyway, I don't really remember that holiday, but a holiday that we go on every single year without fail, apart from this year because of the pandemic and also I've not gone in the past few years because 
I've just been doing other things and I've been older, I've been working. Our parents always take us to the Lake District, um, Keswick specifically. I don't know if any of you watching will have heard of the Keswick Convention. It's a big like Christian festival and it goes on for three weeks in this beautiful town of Keswick. Sorry if you live there because we descend, thousands of people descend on it every year just for the convention and oh my goodness that is such a big part of my like childhood and teenage years. There was all these like kids clubs and youth clubs and I fell in love with about 800 different boys and then broke my heart when we had to leave and it was just the best thing ever if you've never been to the Keswick Convention you should go but you probably you know you need to have some interest in going to the church part of it or it's kind of pointless going to the convention. I feel really bad for my parents that they couldn't go this year I don't think they've missed it in about 20 not older than me so maybe like 32 years or something like they've always gone every year apart from one year we went to Skegness instead to spring harvest. Does any, do any of you know what I'm talking about? Like the Keswick Convention Spring Harvest. I'd love to know. Oh, do you know what else we also got to do growing up? And I know now, like looking back, how much of a struggle it must have been for my parents sending all of us because we really didn't have any money. They used to send us to SU camp. Has anyone ever been to an SU camp? Scripture Union. It's like another Christian camp. But you do like canoeing and skating and rollerblading and ice skating and swimming and it's just the best thing ever for like a week away from your parents and you just got your pals you know look at that blue light i'm just gonna clean up my fallout and then we'll move on to skin because i really shouldn't make this video far too long because yeah i get really bored editing and i'll end up like cutting out half of the footage because i just can't be bothered sitting editing it we need to put some base on because i look rough as a badger's bum but but about my butt look like a butt i am i'm just gonna moisturize very quickly i yeah i had the best childhood ever to be honest the best only break memory after the age of two before that was the worst the worst like real bad <laughs> but yeah after that best ever best parents you could ever ask for best siblings had two very protective, wonderful older brothers and two very silly, we fought all the time sisters. You know, that's what sisters are for. Absolutely what they're for. You know what though? I was boy crazy from a really young age. My poor parents, I had like a new boyfriend every week and I'm talking like primary school boyfriend so it's just like, hey my friend wants you to be her boyfriend and they're like, fine and then you never actually speak to each other and you're like that's my boyfriend and he's at the other end of the the school playing football with his friends you know that's what it is but i did get my first kiss technically when i was about i don't know 10 and there was this boy that i really fancy his name was daniel and he was gorgeous obviously and he sometimes walked me home and then this one day we were at primary school and he walked me home and just before we like rounded the corner so you could like see my house and all that he said can I kiss you and I was like oh, yes and he kissed me on the cheek and I ran home and I told my mum and she thought it was hilarious and I didn't know why she found it funny but yeah that was my first kiss okay 10 years old meet that that was the only time I ever kissed him and he kissed me. I'm going to use my MAC strobe cream. I just put on my Desiem uh, wrinkle moisturiser thing, primer. I don't think anything else really happened as I grew up. I remember getting officially adopted, like I remember the party that we had. Um, my parents, we got baptised very soon after. I think it was, I mean maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was very like around the same time. We got baptised after we were adopted and I was about eight or nine, seven, eight or nine. I don't know because I remember it. And I remember we were in the church and everyone was giving us presents and it was like this massive party. And I think it was to celebrate like the adoption and being baptised. 
best day ever. Do you know how many like rolls of those, you know when you get those like Easter rolls of sweets? Oh my goodness, I used to love fruit pastels and fruit gums. Now I can't eat fruit pastels because I don't like the texture on my teeth. Ugh, gives me the heebie-jeebies. But yeah, that was amazing. I'm going to use my um, Conceal and Glow again because I've been using that like the past four days and loving it. Also, I'm completely out of my AVH. I finished it. Well, I finished up my the one that actually suits my skin tone. It's very sad, but also very, I'm like proud of myself for finishing it up. This is shade 6 and yeah, I've been really enjoying this, especially over the MAC Stroke Cream. It's such a glossy, dewy, beautiful base. I might just do actually a lot of creams today. Then I started high school. I started high school, I was 10, 11, I don't know, still the youngest in my class. I went to Tain Royal Academy, which was the like biggest high school in the area. Dornick also had a... Uh, an Academy Dornick, if you kind of think you recognise that name but you're not sure, it's where Madonna got married, which was very big news, I remember that. I remember that, she got married at Dornick Cathedral or Chapel or whatever it was, I don't know, I was quite young. Was that to Guy Ritchie? I can't remember, but that was exciting. Also the Queen's been to Tain a few times. It's a royal borough. Um, then I went to high school and because it was the biggest high school, like everyone that I knew from primary went to my high school. So I was in class with like everyone that I already knew, except because it is the biggest high school, a few kids that maybe went to like other primaries around us came then to Tain for high school. So I did make a lot of new friends as well. And again, in high school in Tain, I would, I would say there was then more the, like the popular crowd and like the not as popular crowd and you know I don't really like saying popular crowd because I feel like it's got like it's always really negative but it wasn't it's just how it was I had lots and lots and lots of friends I had a great time I was pretty decent at school I feel like just kind of middle middle of the road good at some things like really good at art loved art um, not so good at others like maths oh this is a really nice foundation for day-to-day -day wear I wouldn't wear it for a special occasion just because it's not got the coverage but I love that I now have another drugstore foundation that I can just throw on and be happy with and not like be spending a whole heap of money. I'm gonna use my, I think I'm actually gonna use my Huda Tantra because sometimes the Fenty pool's quite cold. I mean this is the shade light. I'm just gonna do a lot of creams so deal with it. I just loved how my skin looked a couple of days ago when I used my Ciate foundation and all cream products. I looked awesome, not gonna lie. My high school was fun. I, again, was, was continually boy crazy. So there was a boy, I'll say his name, Matthew. His name was Matthew. I won't say his surname. I mean, I'm sure this boy hasn't thought about me in about... 17 years so it wouldn't really matter but anyway I'd spoken to him a few times he joined our class quite late on I must have been in like second year or third year so maybe I was like 12 or 13 years old and this boy Matthew kind of showed up out of the blue and I don't even remember being friends with him like I didn't know him and then one day he showed up at my house with his mum with a bunch of flowers, a box of chocolate, bearing when I'm like 12 or 13 years old, a box of chocolates, flowers, a card, I think there was some like jewellery in there, you know just like cheap kids jewellery but jewellery in there. So of course mum invited them in and this card was proclaiming his love for me and how he you know was gonna grow up and marry me and he wanted me to be his girlfriend and I could have absolutely died. I was so embarrassed because mum, my mum found this hilarious because I'm so young and this was so dramatic and she was just baffled in funniness. Um, and his mum and my, obviously my mum made her a cup of tea, they'd never met before but my mum's a very welcoming mum. You'd all love her. She'd adopt you all if she could. So yeah, in for a cup of tea and, and her his mum was telling my mum oh my goodness you know I think this is the one he loves her they're probably gonna get married and that's really the last time I ever heard from him don't know what I did wrong 
But yeah, I was mortified anyway. But my mum kept the letter. Pretty sure we ate the chocolates. My mum kept the letter in her medicine cabinet in the kitchen for years and I'm really gutted. Definitely lost it when we moved because it was just hilarious. This is the Fenty one, which is much better for my nose because it's so pale. And whereas the Huda's so dark. But I still love them both. I'd say pretty much equally to be honest. Early teens is probably when I got into my love of horses the most. What concealer? I'll use my collection new one because I really enjoyed this last time I used it. And I've used it a couple of times since that video as well. My sister was horse mad and before, or maybe, no, I definitely had Amber when I was very little. Like before my parents adopted the last three of their, their brood, my sister had a horse called Amber. She, I mean, she was a wreck. At the time, I thought she was probably the best thing ever, but she was about 30 years old. I'm surprised she had all four legs. Um, an absolute wreck, but she was a great mare. And uh, so my sister was horse nuts, and that's what made me horse crazy. Because I remember I got to ride on Amber, but she was very old. I think she was eventually just too old and died. Horses don't live that long, unfortunately. And I've always said to my sister that I'm mad at her for getting me into horses because horses, apart from makeup, like say if I had a heap of money, like heaps of money growing up, you wouldn't have me on YouTube now because I would be hopefully like riding in the Olympics or at least have a career in horses and especially like uh, show jumping because horses were my biggest, biggest, biggest passion. I only got into makeup in like 2017, 2016, 2017, like really into it. There was a there was a riding school in Tain, and I mean things are so different now. Like almost 30, well maybe like 25 years later. I remember there was a riding school, and we went up to we go up all the time and just like pat the horses and stuff. But we couldn't afford riding lessons. But the women that owned it, Kate. There was this little pony called William, a little, he was a little grey, he must have been like a Welsh section B, probably, he was tiny. And she used to say to me, if you can catch him, you can ride him. Oh my goodness, that pony was the devil. Definitely caught him a couple of times, but yeah, I usually couldn't catch him, so I'd just go home empty handed. Still, great day up at the horses, for me, that was always fun. Uh, I'm gonna use my cream... Oh, do you know what? I've got a new cream bronzer that I'd like to try today rather than just going in my Fenty one. Where is it though? Yeah, I've got this Primark PS Bronze Whip, which is like, kind of looks like the Chanel one, but it's like a lot smaller. So I'll try this out. Eventually, my oldest sister, my the one that's 10 years older than me, I just don't want to say her name, I just, I don't know. You know, I want to keep my family's privacy and stuff. She moved... Um, up north so she started living in first of all she lived in Aberdeen and um, she lived in Cove Bay this is many years ago and then she moved to a place called Towley's which was a farm and it was actually the farm was owned by a, I think it was a Swedish company and they grew Christmas trees but they had a house on the land and um, that was for rent so she was renting that she had um, her wee boy by this point and this is nice. Oh my goodness, this is nice. I'm just putting it on like not saying anything. I think it's because it's just, I feel like I'm putting my Fenty on. This is four pounds. Oh my goodness, go and get it. So she um, then got, uh, she always had horses like growing up. When she'd like gone out on her own into the world, she always had horses. She either like loaned them or bought them for cheap. Everything was quite different back in the day, wasn't it? Horses were certainly cheaper. And eventually, when I was about, I must have been 12, she bought me and my sister, my sister that was one year older than me, she bought us our first pony, like for us, because she already had another horse at this point. And he was called Sabre, and he was a, I think, 14-1 um, Arabian cross. And that pony taught me everything. I definitely have some photos of like me and him together. He was my thing. He was like my my safe place. Me and my sister would go up on the mega bus like every single weekend from well go down from Tain 
to Aberdeenshire to see my sister and our pony. He was the best, he taught me everything. I started jumping on him, I did my first like gallops across the hills on him. He was the best. If you are a horse person, then you'll understand just the joy that a horse brings. Um, it's, it's different to any other animal. It's just hugely different because it's, they're so big and you do so much with them. I just feel like it's a really different relationship to like that that you would have with a dog or something like that. See how pale that primer is like around my eye. I mean it's fine. I think I've just gone a little bit darker today than I usually would. I'm just going to quickly powder and then I'll continue telling you about Saber but I'm just, yeah, give me just this. Give me a second. I just powdered out of habit before even doing liquid highlighter. But I'm gonna try. I've been using this Morphe Dimension Effect Highlighting Stick. They sent this to me ages ago. And I've been using it just as a base for my like highlight when I do more cream style looks. And I like it, I'm just hoping it doesn't disrupt anything. Like it's not the most glowy, but actually if you were having like a no makeup day, which I quite often do with this, I'll just put a bit of it on. And it just makes me look real healthy. So yeah, Sabre was my first pony. I'd ridden a lot before him, but he was like mine. And he was more mine like than my other sisters. He just was more my pony. And he was the best thing since sliced bread. I used to do little competitions on him. He was really old when we got him. We had him on permanent loan. I think he must have been about 20 when we got him, but he was still so full of life. He was a, a schoolmaster. Um, so he'd done a lot of like riding school and like teaching people so he was just perfect for us to really really learn and grow. Horses really are my passion, I could sit and talk about them all day honestly, oh my goodness. <laughs> if I had so much money I would just have horses and you'd never see me. Or I'd have a horse YouTube channel because that's also fun, I watch so many. If you want good recommendations I'll leave some of my favourites below of like equine YouTube channels because I'm obsessed. Um, what now? A little bit of powder contour, I think. Just use my essence. Works. I love it. Yeah, a lot of my, like, early teens to late on teens, I spent just so, so much time with my sister in Aberdeenshire. She used to do crazy things. I remember one time she said to us, I'll give you a polo, not a whole packet of polos, just one polo. If you run through this field of bulls, we did it because we wanted the polo. You're nuts. Nuts. She used to like sit us on the roof of her car. This is like in like private land, like on the farm that she rented. And she was the only one there apart from the Christmas tree farmer. Anyway, she'd put us on the roof of her car while she did donuts. We would go out and about and uh, We had our, our jumps, like our show jumps, were traffic cones that we'd sometimes find. <laughs> this is many years ago, you can't tell the police on me now. Sorry Lauren. I was also always a very healthy, active kid. Very healthy, very active. Gymnastics was another big passion of mine. I was very flexible, loved it. Just did so much outside play. Like, it's not really kind of the same anymore, I don't think. We were outside all the time and I think as well because it was a small town it was just more normal for all the kids to be out until quite late especially in summer like we'd be allowed to play outside until you know really late at night if it wasn't a school night. I'm gonna use my Belgian waffle by BH because I love it. Thank you Stevie. I'm gonna use the darker shade around the perimeter. I am so nearly finished. Uh, highlight, I'm going to use my Benefit Cookie because I used that as well the other day and I just thought mm, I need to use Cookie more. I'll hit on moving to Edinburgh and then this video will be done anyway because I think, I feel like everything starts getting more juicy once I've moved to Edinburgh and I've grown up a bit like I can tell you more of the like the fruity stories you know. So I was 13 and we came home from school one day and my mum and dad sat us down in the living room and you know when they're like, or, you know, everyone please take a seat. We all knew something was going on, we didn't have a clue what it was. But we were all terrified and mum and dad announced that we were moving 
to Edinburgh and we were very much, apart from my sister who at this point was, you know, had lived in Aberdeen and now lived out in the country and things, we like were very shocked, very country kids. We didn't really know much about big cities, like we'd never ever lived in one, we'd only ever visited some. Um, so this was the worst news of my life up to that point, apart from the first two years. <laughs> um, this was awful, I could not believe it. I was so thoroughly devastated. I can't even tell you. It was awful. And I mean, looking back, it was like the best thing ever that we moved to a big city at that age because, you know, you can get used to it then and you make new friends and all that, but how glowy am I? Could I be glowier? Probably. I love Benefit Cookie. My goodness. So we were all very devastated and up until that point as well, we were not allowed mobile phones. I'm going to use that MAC blush actually that I used in that video, the So Natural Glow Play Blush because it's a very lovely colour and it's actually like a cream formula, like cream to powder maybe, which I didn't really realise when I first played with it but it will definitely go better with this look now because I've got so many glowy products on it. It's just such a gorgeous like natural flush for a pale skin tone. So yeah, up to that point we were never allowed a phone. I remember my brother getting his first phone, my oldest brother, and it was a big orange, well it wasn't orange, it was on the network orange, this big brick. But oh my goodness, at the time, <laughs> that was top quality technology. We couldn't believe my parents had bought it. And I realised now it's because he was going to go off to college. So they wanted him to have a phone, but anyway, we were told, okay, they could see we were devastated, they totally bribed us, not usual for my parents, they said, you can have a phone when we move to Edinburgh. Oh my goodness, that perked us right up. All three of us delighted then at that point, because we were going to have a mobile phone. So guided, I was going to be leaving all my friends, I remember my first phone, it was, I don't know, what the, I'll put a picture up on screen, it was a Nokia, it was the navy one with the orange. I thought it was the best thing ever. I'm gonna use my Barry M eyeliner. I am just in love. Can you believe that eyeliner is $3.99? That is one of the best drugstore eyeliners. It's creamy, it's so pigmented. That could be like Marc Jacobs, that could be Kat Von D, that could be any of these like high-end brands that do beautiful eyeliners, right? So again, when we moved to Edinburgh, because dad is a minister, we went into the manse. My parents are still there. So I won't tell you the address or anything, but it was up in Fairmile Head in Edinburgh, which is actually an absolutely lovely area. We were in a cul-de-sac. Straight across from us, like opposite us, there was a girl who was exactly the same age as me. Went to the same school that I was going to be going to, and we became the best of friends. It was amazing. And do you know what else? She had horses. You literally couldn't have asked for anything better, and I think that's what really helped me as well when we moved to Edinburgh was that I automatically had a friend, a next door neighbour friend and she had horses and she was so happy. Every time she went up to the horses after school I was with her. I would sometimes go up when they didn't go up, like if they went away or something I would be allowed to ride their horses. Um, I used to ride Gabby, she was a lovely 16-3, she was mental, I loved her so much. So that was, that was nice having a best friend next door. She, now, that neighbour, my lovely friend again, I'm just not saying her name. She's now my sister-in-law. My brother ended up marrying her. She's still got horses. I was up at them. Uh, start of this year. I only took one photo, I think. And yeah, we ended up, we were at the same school, obviously, because um, we were in the same catchment area. I absolutely hated it. Remember, I came from a really small, small school where I knew absolutely everybody. I'd grown up with them. And I moved to this huge school, like Fur Hill. I went to Fur Hill High School, by the way. Would not recommend. And it was probably like five, maybe t more times bigger than Tain Royal Academy. And it was the worst experience of my life. I hated it. I used to just go in the bathroom in the morning once my parents had woken us up for school and just stick my toothbrush down my throat to throw up. I mean, mum did, she was good to me, she let me stay off an awful lot, but 
it did get to the point where she, I, she just had to like force me to go to school. It was awful. I hated it so much. I'd never been around these people. Like I like I don't want to sound rude, but in Tain there was no Neds. And if you're if you're not from Britain, I'm not sure if you'll know what a Ned is, like a BAM, a Ned. And then I'd never been around and the accent was different and they ever made fun of my accent because I had this really strong Highland accent. They used to say, make me say cabbage because apparently I said that really weird. Cabbage. My accent's so different now. I had a lovely Highland accent and I'm devastated it's gone to be honest. I'm just gonna nip off, put my eyes and lashes on then we'll come back and do a lip and I'll finish off just like my first year of being in a horrible big school. And then we'll need to wait for part two if you want to keep getting to know me and hear about my life. Um, I'll be back in a sec, I'm just, I hate my eyes. I just want to see if I can do anything to make it a bit better. I'm gonna use that Barium Lip Kit that I used in a recent video. It's very good, I just realized you can't really talk when I'm doing lips. So yeah, Fur Hill was really rough for me. I mean, I did have friends, like I had my next door neighbor, he was also my best pal. I had, you know, other pals too, but I really didn't like it and I didn't like the teachers. And it just, it was very big and scary when you're a little country bumpkin and all of a sudden there's thousands of people around you as opposed to a few hundred. First day, I think it was maybe even my first day at school, I had PE, which I was quite excited about. Um because I really love PE. My first day I was walking to class with everyone, we went and got changed in the locker rooms, we were walking to class, the big sports hall, and a girl came up and pulled down my trousers in front of everyone. I was brand new at the school. It was my first day, or my first week. And she pulled down my trousers in front of everybody. And yeah, that's one of the worst days of my life. I turned around and slapped her in the face and I got in trouble. She pulled down my trousers. This, by the way, is in the shade Go To. I can't apply liquid lipstick neatly, honestly. It's so hard. Do you know, the only makeup I wore in school, I wasn't allowed to wear makeup at school at all. Um, but when we got to school, we would go and put makeup on in the toilets. This is in, like, really early on. We used to put on the Rimmel Stick Concealer on our lips. This is all I wore with clear lip gloss on top and do you know what kids these days just don't get to make those mistakes because of youtube and everything they'll look great and they're like 12 you know so this is like the worst makeup look i've ever done in my life i really like my skin that looks so nice but the eyes are absolutely shocking what can you expect i take hours to do my makeup. Hours and hours and hours, so like, please don't judge. So yeah, that is my first few years up to like the age of like 14, 15. Um, let me know what you think. Do you want a part two where I talk about maybe like 15 to 25, which is where all the juicy stuff is, let's be honest. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, kind of getting to know me a little bit better. It's more like history of Melissa in a way. That's about it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do give it a thumbs up because then I'll actually know that you enjoyed it. Um, I'll try and do better makeup next time. That palette is nice by the way. I just need to play with it a lot more. I need to do like a proper P. Louise look with it. Um, leave me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already, especially if you want a part two and I do three videos per week, which is actually four because I do a collab every Sunday on Teresa's channel. Linked below. Yeah, I'm gonna piss off. I had fun. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm not gonna enjoy editing it. I hate editing. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Bye.